It's nice to know that whenever you're in trouble, you can always rely on your fellow Hindu goddess to lend you a hand, or two, or eight. Somebody took Catch These Hands way too seriously. So with all these new spirits running around, I'm sure everybody is wondering who is this naked blue beauty that they put into the series. I assure you that she is not a smurf. She is in fact Kali from Hindu myth and she's in the alter ego class. She is the existence that comes from the Hindu text, the Devi Mahamayam, Devi representing goddesses, and Devi Mahamayam representing glory to the goddesses. So going back into the text, at the top of everything you have Shakti, who is the literal great divine mother of Hindu myth. She's the apex, she's the alpha, she's the omega, and she holds a grip over the universe. She is the embodiment of primordial chaos. The same chaos that you see in any myth where everything comes from, she stands for exactly that. The same chaos that we fight against in the story of FGO, she stands for that. Her name itself literally means power. But beyond that, she isn't the only one. She also has counterparts, each one being designated with a particular job, while also being an extension of Shakti. The first goddess and one that you all should be familiar with is Pravati, who we know to be Shiva's wife. But the reason that Pravati is Shiva's wife is because Shakti is Shiva's wife, and Pravati is just a counterpart to her. Another goddess, and the one that's come out most recent, is Durga who is also an extension of Shakti. She's essentially her warrior goddess variant. And the reason that she exists is because of one of the holy trinity, Brahma. When Brahma created the world, it was necessary that he hit every aspect of life. So naturally he had to create the bad also. He created the gods, the humans, the nature spirits, but most importantly, the Asuras. The Asuras literally exist to oppose the gods. They were anti-gods. And because of that description, most people just know them as demons. Now at first, the Pantheon was able to hold the Asuras under control. So it was never that big of a deal until they ran into the Asura Mahishasura, somebody that even the king of gods, Indra, and also Arjuna's godly father, couldn't take care of. Nobody in the Pantheon could deal with his mechanics. So what they ended up doing, the Supreme Gods, the Holy Trinity, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, along with the rest of the gods, got together and created a goddess that would be able to take down Rock Tabija. The goddess that they ended up manifesting was Shakti, the one above all. So Shakti ends up sending out Durga, her warrior goddess extension into battle with this Asura. And though he was an immortal shapeshifter, she was still able to bring him down with her trident. But there was another problem, the Asura rocked Abijah. So she goes into battle with him as well. Dorga had swords, she had darts, she had thunderbolts, spears, in addition to everything else. But the problem with Rock Tabija is that he had a blessing that allowed him to use his own blood to reincarnate. So every time he was penetrated, the blood that would splash and fly out into the air, once it came out, miniature versions of himself would be born again. So there was no actual way of taking him down. At least by their logic, the same thing happened to Durga. So what Durga does, it says, okay, let's see how you deal with this one. And out of Durga's third eye, she begins to manifest Kali. So you got the whole pantheon making this supreme goddess. She makes a counterpart to herself, and then the counterpart starts to manifest another counterpart. Now throughout Hindu myth, you would often see different avatars that represent higher people. But since Kali was not just created, but manifested, she represents everything that they have and then some. She is also the primordial chaos. She is the embodiment of creation, of time, of destruction, death, so when you think about Kali, her existence is one that should tower over everybody in the verse. So Kali's manifestation is a reason for a number of things. It's the reason that she takes on the form of Sakura. Remember we started off with Parvati as Sakura, and with her being that extension, it's only natural that you keep that going in the body of the same person. It's accurate and it's lore driven. Another thing to note is that Durga and Kali were seen fighting alongside each other when they went against Rock Tabija. And we do have both. 
so in theory Durga should be able to double team you as two supreme beings at least that's what she should do so while Durga was doing everything I mentioned Kali comes in with her staff and her trident giving him even more trouble but the final nail in the coffin was Kali's tongue now I'm sure a lot of people have seen the thumbnail and was like she looked crazy as hell this is also lore driven in the scripture Kali has the power to expand and enlarge her tongue and when she does this she ends up catching all the blood clones that fall out of rock the Bija. so at that point his blessing meant nothing and then they defeat him and then in the text they go on to defeat even more Osiris. but in the folklore she does a bit more if you try to look up Kali there's a picture of her standing on top of Shiva and the reason for this being is that when she defeated Rock the Bija, the Asura blood made her go out of control and she started to do a victory dance that literally was shaking the universe her power is just that great even the gods started to complain man make her stop so shiva her husband runs up to kali and allows her to trample upon him so he could stop the shaking this is crazy who would have thought shiva was on that bdsm all the step on me memes are really starting to come to life it started with shiva it's canon but beyond that the universe stopped shaking and once Kali had realized that she was trampling on her own husband she looked down and she stopped she didn't even know what was going on until it was already over now Kali has been depicted in many different forms but the most common one that we see is the one with blue skin and the one that fate decided to use the blue is an equivalent to the cosmos so like i said before it represents that she means everything she's also been seen with black skin the black skin is for the primordial chaos which starts from the same color again this also goes back to the same thing she also appears naked and the reason for this is that she stands for people exposing the truth of themselves them at their purest form and reaching the highest form of themselves aka enlightenment so she doesn't need garments she's fine the way she is in the pictures you'll see a bunch of cut off arms around her waist in the form of a skirt this is for the infinite amount of times that your hands will be put to work to reach enlightenment the infinite amount of times that her supporters have to be sacrificed via their work to free themselves from the physical body you see her donning a giant necklace of severed heads usually she has around 50 of them these are also trophies like the arm they are the heads of the asuras that she's taken down but only some of them this and the head that she carries in her hand are another thing that represent freedom freedom from the body we must go beyond the physical at times you'll see her with the bowl that has the blood of her victims because just like her fight with rock the Bija, she will often get intoxicated with this blood and continue her pursuit with even more energy she has earrings made from the corpses of children again she is a mother goddess and the representation of time so this just means that they're always with her they're always on her mind and she's just looking out for them she's got serpents jackals and birds that she uses as her familiars you even see this in her fate depiction she also has a lion sometimes this is a tiger you can see this in her craft essence fake made a note of that as well she's usually seen with four arms which represent the circle of life creation all the way to destruction and Dorga, the counterpart that she comes from is often seen with eight arms we know that one of her weapons is the triton going back to pravati she also has a triton we know that she has the same triton some Thing that was bestowed to her from Shiva so from that we know that this too recognizes her as the wife of Shiva her sword is a scimitar it represents divine knowledge and as you can see the blood coming from the head the head is meant to be the ego so the sword and the head together she's showing that you must cut off your ego in order to triumph everything here has some type of heavy meaning even the tongue out is in alignment with her level of power and her thirst for Asura blood it makes you feel away and it's supposed to it incites many different emotions but mostly it's supposed to be fear very interesting spirit probably one of my favorites just looking into her lore alone and there's something that i want to make very clear if we're going by the background 
Holly should be the strongest servant out of everybody in the verse. As of now, she is the strongest spirit that there is. She is time, she is creation, she is destruction, she is primordial chaos. There is nothing that goes above her at all. Now you can even put her above Space Ishtar, who I mentioned was the strongest before. But even Ishtar was a high level goddess that was created. Kali is so powerful that she has no creation. She just manifested, she just exists, and she has no death. So yeah, she is absolutely ridiculous. Looking at her parameters, really everything should be EX. But again, you gotta remember, there is the Sakura aspect. So she has some downgrades, but she's got EX strength. She's got EX mana and she has an EX MP. For her personal skills, she's got three EXs and an A rank. And then for her Noble Phantasm, she's got two EXs on that too. So again, this is in the territory of a chief god. By the way, she's above the Holy Trinity. She's above Brahma, she's above Vishnu, and she's above Shiva because it took all of them to bring her into existence. So she's higher than the highest gods there is. Her phantasm is literally anti-world, and then the other one is flat out annihilation. I don't even know what that is. What is that? She's so strong that she's just making up new categories as she goes. I have never seen that before. I kid you not. A cool thing about her is that she has both phantasms depending on if you're playing in her Dorga or her Kali form. For the one with Kali, that's the one that's anti-world and it just goes back to the story that I was just talking about. The victory dance that shook the universe. Her phantasm is literally the same victory dance that cracks the earth and shatters the world. For the one in her Durga form, she takes all the weapons in her possession from the other gods, imbues them with the attribute of flame, and starts dropping them all across the field in colossal form. And this is the one that's annihilation. But in her profile, it does say that she shares the divine core with Pravati and Durga to say that they're all the same person. And it's not just them, it's many other goddesses. Those are just the ones that fate is focusing on. By the way, this would technically make Ganesha her child as well. In some accounts, you have her depicted with 10 heads, 10 legs, and 10 arms. And each body part is something that ties back to the gods, bringing all their powers into one to bring out her. And that's why she has something from each of them in one of her hands. And if you look at her artwork, you kind of get a semblance of this. She does have the actual 10 arms in verse. 